Okay, welcome back. This is the third video in our series on how to create an e-commerce site using the uh, WooCommerce plugin and the Woo Store theme. So what we did in the last video uh, was I did a quick run through of the WooCommerce plugin settings. Um, and WooCommerce is really the engine that's going to drive this um, e-commerce site, which is uh, WorldCupTees.com. It's going to be a soccer t-shirt uh, site that we're building from start to finish here in this series. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a quick run through of the actual uh, theme settings, the Woo Store theme settings. And uh, I'm going to point out what's important. We're going to upload a custom header, a favicon, and I'm going to show you some of the other important settings that you're going to want to do on your first pass through uh, the theme option settings. Okay. So let's go ahead and log into our WordPress admin and let's go to Woo Store and then let's click on theme options. And again, if you have questions that I don't cover as I go through this, I'm going to try to go through this somewhat quick, uh, fast. If you do have questions that I don't cover, just contact me through uploadwp.com and I'll get back to you. All right, so the first thing that we're going to get go to here is the quick start and the theme style sheet. So you can really choose uh, a number of different uh, theme colors if you'd like that are that are just built in here for you. Um, I'm going to just stick right now with... Uh, the default CSS, but you you can choose from green, brown, blue, orange, and uh, a few other color schemes. You can also completely customize the theme if you want, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but here we go, uh, custom logo. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a logo that I've already created. Um, I'll put the exact dimensions of the logo, the the size that I use for the logo um, on Upload WP. If you go out there and look at this post, you'll be able to find those. Also. For logo creation, I like to use Fiverr, Fiverr.com. Um, I usually I can get you can get really good logos created on Fiverr, uh, and I will give you the contacts or the gigs that I like best that I've had the best success with. Now, please note I did not outsource this logo. Um, I just quickly put this one together uh, for the purpose of demonstration in this video. Um, I'll probably go back after I'm done with this and have a custom logo made, but um, just note that I get most of my logos made on Fiverr and have had real good success with that. Tees World Cup Tees. So uploading your logo is as easy as just browsing, finding the uh, logo, and uh, just like you would insert an image into a post or anything else within WordPress. So there's our custom logo. If you want to add a favicon as well, you can, which I'm, I'll go ahead and add because I've already created that. Again, this is just as easy as selecting uh, an image just like you would in a post. And go ahead and click use that image. So there's our favicon tracking code here. Again, you can you can paste uh, what, whoever you use for tracking, like Google Analytics or whatever. Uh, or you could just use the Ultimate GA plugin and oh, that we've just uploaded shows up. So if I go out to the site and refresh the page, we should see our logo show up out here. There we go. And I'm going to make some changes to the background so that it blends in. All right. But for now, our logo is out there. And our favic favicon actually shows up as well up here. I don't know if you can see that, but our favicon is there as well. All right, so it's that easy to upload your logo, and I will give you the dimensions that I use for the logo uh, on my site, Upload WP, and I'll also give you um, my favorite Fiverr gigs for logo creation uh, that I think you'll be really happy with. Um, so then if we go to subscription settings, uh, here's where you can go ahead uh, and enter like your RSS URL if you use FeedBurner, or your email subscription. if so if you use like uh, MailChimp or FeedBurner for email, if you collect email addresses, you can enter that here. Your contact form email. If you don't use a uh, like a contact page plugin like uh, Easy Contact uh, or whatever, you can just enter you know your email address here. And then when you create the contact form page, which we'll do later in another uh, tutorial video, it'll automatically send you an email anytime somebody uses the contact form. So that's what you set up here. Again, to start out with, unless you already have this stuff set up, just I would ignore it. Display options. Here's where you can enter custom CSS if you really want to customize the look and feel, or, or the look of the uh, of the theme. 
but again to start out with I would not worry about uh, custom CSS. The one setting I would point out on this page is display breadcrumbs. I always like to, to uh, ha check that box and have breadcrumbs. And breadcrumbs, if you don't know, uh, if I give you an example here, are basically just, it, it helps for navigation, people navigating the site. These are breadcrumbs right here. It shows them what page they're on on the website. So I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and click display breadcrumbs. Everything else you can just leave default. Click save changes, options updated. All right, so now we've done the general settings, styling options. Uh, here's where you can change the background color if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to change it to all white. Um, but you can change it to whatever color you want. And then you could even use a background image if you wanted to. Um, so for example, like if you wanted this background to all to be like an image of whatever, you could do that. Uh, if you've ever set up a Twitter account and a Twitter background, you might have used an image in the background. That's the same idea here. So you can really customize how this looks. I'm just going to make the background white. Click Save Changes. And then if I go back up to the site, refresh the page, we should have an, all an image if you want. You can repeat the image. You can make it a solid color, whatever you want. You can do that via this styling options background section. And then you can even change the color of the links on the website. You know, what color the actual link is, what color it is when you hover it over, and then a but the color of the button. So you can really easily customize the look and feel back here. Typography, this is where you would change the text on the site. You can change the size of it, uh, the style of the text you want to use, uh, and the color. So you can do that for everything, for navigation, for all your general uh, text on the site, your post title, uh, pretty much everything, your widget titles. You can change all of that the way it looks, the size, the, t uh, the actual font right here in typography. Um, and then home page layout. Um, I leave everything in here kind of to our two default settings to start out with. Um, but just a couple important things that you might want to change after you've created a few products. Uh, home page featured products. Here's where you can choose the number of featured products to show. Okay, I like just leaving that to four. And then home page recent product entries. Again, you can choose uh, the number of recent products that you want to show. And just to give you an example of what that looks like, if I go out to one of my sites that's further along here, I'm still I'm still working on this site, but it's further along. Here's where you see featured products. So right now I have two, and then recent products would display down here on the home page underneath the slider. So that's where you set that up, uh, home page layout, and then slider settings. This is where you're going to control that home page featured slider, which you see here. Um, I'm going to do an entire video just on the slider, so I'm not going to get into details on this. But that's where the slider settings are. Uh, layout options, that's just uh, where you can choose the actual layout of the site, whether you want it to be like a right-hand navigation or a left-hand navigation. Dynamic images, I don't touch anything in here. This is really just all about how you want to resize your images. Uh, I just leave it set to uh, to default settings on for all of these basically. But again, this is something that after you've you know have your site further along, you might want to go back and tweak a little bit. Uh, you can even change the thumbnail settings, the dimensions, the size of the thumbnails, how they align. All that stuff can be changed under dynamic images. And then footer customization. Um, important thing to note here is that you can uh, have up to four uh, footer widget areas. Um, by default it will be set to four. I like to go with three and you can see that here I have three footer widget sections right here. You can have up to four, you can have two, you can have one, or you can have none. I do encourage you to have at least uh, one or two because it's good for SEO and it just helps, uh, gives you more navigation, uh, more content to display on your site. So that's where you can choose your footer widget areas. Um, and you can even uh, enable uh, more more uh, uh, text or HTML or whatever you want underneath the footer. So let's say here's our footer widget sections. This is where they would show up. Underneath here, you can have whatever you want. You can have links and whatever you want, uh, which is good for SEO. And as your site grows, if it grows into a, a large e-commerce site with tons of pages and whatever, you can put links down here, which is which you'll see on some of the major uh, e-commerce sites out there. And then um, the footer or this 
down here this uh, these links powered by WordPress and Woo themes. I'll show you how to change this uh, in another video uh, so that it goes to whatever pages you want on your site so that doesn't link out to Woo themes and WordPress. I'll show you where to change that the footer links as well. Um, and then the last thing is subscribe and connect. You know this is where you can. Uh, if you want your social media uh, icons to show like your Twitter and your Facebook and your Google Plus pages uh, you can set that all up out here uh, and if your opt-in box as well if you use MailChimp or FeedBurner or whatever you use to collect email addresses uh, and then so basically it's as easy as you enter your Twitter URL here your Facebook your YouTube channel uh, it's got Flickr, LinkedIn, Delicious, and Google Plus. So that would automatically create these icons that you'd see right here. Okay, and that would link to your specific uh, social media accounts. Um, so it's really easy to set that up. Uh, just a couple other things to point out. So that's really a quick run through through the uh, Woo Store theme option settings. Again, you're going to want to go through this on your first pass and just take a look at everything, set up what I showed you, just the, the few things. Probably the first thing you'll want to do is uh, get your logo created and upload that because you're going to base the, the rest of the color scheme of your site really off of your logo. So I would start by having your logo created. Again, if you can't create a good logo yourself, I would use Fiverr and I will uh, show you the Fiverr gigs that I use for logo creation uh, that I think are really uh, really good and it's uh, the best part obviously it's only five bucks so you can't beat that a professional logo for five dollars um, and I'll also give you the dimensions that I use for this logo out on the site but that's the first thing I would do I would start here get your logo created upload your logo and then from there you can start styling the background colors the link colors and everything else based off of your logo colors so everything just kinda ties together real nice alright so that's really all you need to do uh, on your first pass through Woo Store theme option settings, start by getting your logo created, upload your logo, and then style the rest of uh, the site based off your logo uh, logo colors. All right, everything else underneath here is really secondary and can be uh, it all can be dealt with after uh, we have some products up and the site uh, further along. So. All right, so what we did in the first video is we installed the WooCommerce plugin, then we uh, installed our Woo Store theme. Uh, second video, what we did was we went through and I showed you the WooCommerce settings real quickly. And now in this third video, we just went through the Woo Store theme options. Again, if you have specific questions, let me know on my site. Uh, in the next video, we're going to get more into uh, actual product setup right here. We'll create some product categories and then we'll add some products and the site will start coming together a little bit more and then we'll uh, set up our featured slider section after that and our widgets and go from there so stay tuned this is just the third video in our series on how to create a professional e-commerce site using WooCommerce and the WooStore theme my name is Adam with Upload WP we'll see you in the next video